Good evening. We're calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for September 14th, 2020. As a preliminary matter, this is John Hurd, the Select Board Chair. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Mem members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, here. Joe Carl? Here. Steve DeCourcy? Here. Lynn Diggins? Here. And staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Tom Manager, Adam Chapdelaine? Here. Town Council, Douglas Heim? Here. And Board Administrator Ashley Marr is participating remotely. Good evening. This meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth given the outbreak of the novel coronavirus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the virus and reduce risk of COVID-19 illness, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings and as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order which you can find posted with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will fit feature public comment. Even if members of the public do not comment, participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. For this meeting, the select board is convening by Zoom as posted on the town's website, identifying how the public may join. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. Please also take care to adjust your screen or device name if you would like to speak. In order for us to recognize speakers appropriately and develop accurate minutes, it is helpful for participants to see your full first and last name when calling upon you rather than a nickname. All the meeting materials, except any executive session materials, are available on the Novus Agenda Dashboard, and we recommend that members and the public follow the agenda as posted on Novus, unless the chair notes otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comments, questions, or motions. Please hold your name until your name is called. Further, please speak. Remember to mute your phone or computer when you're not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If any members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, Please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. This meeting will feature opportunities for public comment on certain agenda items. For comment on items, after members have spoken, I as the chair will afford the public the opportunities as follows. I will ask members for, of the public who wish to speak to identify their names and addresses only. Once the chair has a list of all public commentators, I will call on each by name and afford three minutes for any comments. Please keep in mind that all participants and members of the public must be recognized by the chair before speaking. Finally, each vote tonight will be taken by roll call vote. And that takes us to our next item on the agenda, end of year budget report by Sandy Cooler, our town manager, or our deputy town manager, and Ida Cody, our comptroller. Thank you. Uh Mr. Chair, and thank you members of the board. Edie and I are happy to be here and to present our first uh, uh, end of the year full report on the town's finances. I thought what I'd do is just go through some of the departments uh, that are in the memo, just to touch on them, uh, and then take a look at uh, some of the figures. Um, 
I also wanted to, uh, as an overall, give you a sense of what we see going on. In particular, we think that the general fund did well in FY 2020. Uh, our revenue collection was generally uh, on or above budget and our spending uh, was always uh, within budget or uh, on the sheet you'll see in some cases it looked like it was over, but that really had to do with the timing of money coming in from FY19 affecting the FY20 budget. So uh, it looked like we were maybe spending a little more. Uh, we saw nothing in the general fund that was a significant departure uh, from our budget guidelines. On the enterprise funds, um, we did have some deficits. Fortunately, there were sufficient funds in uh, those enterprise funds to be able to make up for those deficits. Um, and uh, we're able to go forward um, on a go forward without too much of a hit to our funds. Um, I would also just note at this time, we are in a period of a lot of uncertainty around our finances. We know, as I'll speak to specifically, there are some revenue sources that will be hurt for us. Uh, some of our local receipts in particular. Um, I think it is my uh, guesstimate at this point that uh, during FY21, we should be able to get through the year uh, all right if the, if the legislature comes through with local aid as they have initially voted. I am more concerned about FY22 and the impact uh, on both the state budget and therefore on our budget. Uh, we will see from ongoing slowdowns in economic activity. But I will also say that there's a lot unknown at this point. Um, and so we have to keep watching things. Um, Adam, if you could just go back to the first page. There we go. So I'm just going to uh, note a couple of departments here. On this page, you see a reference to the Department of Public Works. Um, it expended 95% of its budget, which meant that there was a lot of unspent money in public works. Uh, it returned close to $620,000 back into the general fund by the end of the year, um, including uh, about $210,000 from the snow and ice budget. So uh, we had a good year in, in regard to snow and ice, and we didn't really have to hit um, the general fund or hit reserve fund at all for DPW, which is often the case that we do have to hit it. Um, I'm going to skip to the next page, Adam. Um, there were, again, uh, some minor variations in department budgets that are noted in the memo uh, under the general fund departments. Under the category of other, uh, these are things that are not in the town budget but are uh, part of the overall municipal budget. Uh, including insurance, our Minuteman uh, appropriation, our pension costs. Um, those all came in as expected, within 1% of the budget. Probably the most important thing to note is that um, we had to transfer out about 19% of the reserve fund. Um, those were mostly for transfers relating to retirements where there were significant buyouts for people meant we transferred out about 300, a little over $300,000 and uh, kept about uh, $1.3 million to be returned to free cash at the end of the year. Uh, those specific figures are further along in the, in the memo. Um, so it was a good year for us in terms of not having to spend the reserve fund. Uh, on the uh, revenue side, in general, uh, our collection rate was, was good. Um, fees were a little bit short, um, partly because we had transferred some of the fees that used to be collected under the fee category into fines and forfeitures. Um, so those fell a little short. Fines and forfeitures also um, fell a little short. Uh, excuse me. Fines and forfeitures fell short because of moving violations. Um, and I think we will I will continue to look at that with the police chief as we go forward. Our hotel tax was very strong in FY20. 
Uh, we surpassed our revenue estimates. We will not see that continue to happen in FY21. In fact, the third quarter hotel tax collections uh, were short of what they had been in previous, previous months. So uh, we will be paying a lot of attention to that. Our clear big winner was investments, uh, the interest rate that we get on our investments. Uh, the treasurer has done a very good job with those interest rates. Um, and I think so that's been a strong case for us. Uh, again, on this page, meals tax also exceeded expectations. And again, I do not anticipate seeing that in, uh, in FY21. Um, Medicaid at the bottom of that page uh, were reimbursements from the school department for services that are provided by school personnel to our school population. Um, they, they more than doubled the, uh, the estimate. We estimate about $100,000 a year. Um, it came in uh, at about $250,000. And so I would like to give a lot of credit to uh, Mike Mason and the staff in the school department for doing all the paperwork and there's a considerable amount of paperwork uh, to um, collect that money. And finally, I just want to mention taxes. We have a collection rate of 99% at the end of the year. That is fairly typical in any one year. Uh, you don't always collect all your taxes in that year, but the fact that we're collecting uh, almost 100% uh, through taxes um, is a good sign. We will continue to collect some of those tax monies in later years. Um, and so I'm feeling, um, I feel that our tax collection rate is good. Adam, if we go to the next page. Um, I'll just talk about a minute about the enterprise funds and then go to the numbers and then take any questions you may have. Um, so we, um, first of all, I want to acknowledge a typo in the um, water and sewer description. Uh, it mentions Joe Connolly doing a lot of work with the comptroller to liquidate prior encumbrances. That is true. Joe did a lot of good work, but he is the director of the recreation and rink funds, and that's where he did his work. It uh, was Mike Rodemacher who did this same work uh, in the water and sewer fund, and um, I will give Ida Cody a lot of credit for the work she did kind of scouring old encumbrances from prior years and really working with the departments to make sure uh, that they weren't holding on to money that they didn't need to. Um, on an operating basis, uh, our expenses exceeded our revenue by almost $700,000. But uh, because of the work that Ida did with Mike Rodemacher and his staff, uh, we took a hit to our uh, fund balance is about $416,000. Uh, given that there's a $6 million uh, fund balance there, uh, I think we're in okay shape. Um, the uh, AC, AYCC um, basically spent what, it, uh, what its budget was um, and uh, they did have increased activity. Um, so there was a minor gap between the two. Um, but it did show during this period that there was a high demand for AYCC services for youth in town uh, who needed uh, psychological counseling. Um, and we expect that that will continue into the coming year. The COA con uh, Transportation Fund, Council on Aging Transportation Fund, basically expended only 67% of its budget because after March, they basically shut down their operations. Uh, both the rink and the recreation fund uh, had major um, losses of revenue from the from what their budgeted rates were. Um, the rink essentially shut down in March uh, and had to give a number of refunds. Uh, Joe Connolly did a great job both in the rink and the recreation department working with people who had paid their fees and allowed them to carry over those fee collections into uh, FY21. So for many people, we did not have to actually write refund checks. Um, and um, Eva did a lot of good work, again, trying to clear out old encumbrances. So our fund actually saw an increase of $26,000 in that balance, even though there was a uh, major reduction in activity. 
We also did have to lay off our part-time workers in the uh, rink. Um, these are uh, people, most of whom have other jobs in the town, so it's not like they were out of work. Um, but uh, once the rink was shut down, we really didn't need their services. On the recreation fund side, um, we uh, saw a drop of about four thousand dollars in the fund balance there because uh, there was no activity in the spring and we did have to issue some refunds but there is sufficient balance in that fund uh, so the fund could absorb it um, and so unfortunate it was a loss uh, but uh, we still ended the year with enough money in the fund so that it did not affect our free cash um, Adam, if you could just go to the next page. Thank you. These are all of the departments, and I think that you can see here is that um, you know every uh, most departments spent uh, pretty much all of their budget. There are a few um, major exceptions uh, like parking, which really shut down and so forth. But otherwise, people are on budget. As I already mentioned, the other categories were pretty much on budget. And if we go to the next page, the Warren articles are small, they have no real financial impact. Those um, kind of varied and we allow those Warren articles, which are run by volunteers on various commissions and committees, basically to keep their money for two years uh, because um, that's just basically what we need to do to allow those committees to get their work done. So uh, we think those are in good shape. I did just want to focus again on our uh, general fund revenue numbers. Uh, again, you can see them all laid out here. Um, at this point, I think what I will do is stop and ask questions and also ask uh, if either Cody wants to uh, make any comments or if you have specific questions, either Ida or I will be more than happy to answer them. Ida, do you have any, any to add? Good evening, everyone. Um, no, I think Sandy covered everything. Um, if you have any questions, we are here to answer. Okay. All right. I will turn it to the board. Uh, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And uh, thank you to Mr. Pooler and, and Ms. Cody for the, the, the comprehensive report. I know this is the first year that you've done this. It's my first going into my second year in the board, but I, I find it very helpful. And um, just a question on the, the recreation enterprise fund and that of all the enterprise funds looks like it's, it's, it's gonna be a struggle for, for fiscal 21. And I'm just wondering what the fund balance is on that uh, in the event that we have further deficits there. Um, right now we're, Right now, we're looking at about, um, I believe, $375,000. The retained earnings haven't been certified yet. So at this point, I only have estimates. Um, but this is the number that I'm looking at right now. Um, OK. And uh, just a question, and this is just the town side, but do we know how the, uh, what the end of the year numbers were for the, uh, the school department in, in terms of where they were relative to their their budgeted figures they're turning back around six hundred thousand dollars in the general fund from this current fiscal year okay great thank you very much and mrs Mahan. thank you mr chair um just a, a few things um i know at the when we had and, and thank you to Ms. cody and, and mr pooler um for giving us all the information that we've asked for um, to the utmost extent. Um, just for me, for readability and, and being able to uh, migrate through the document versus I'm not on Munis and I can do a search. And I'm pretty sure I mentioned this at the mid-year report. Is there any way, I'm doing the housekeeping questions first. Is there any way either in front of the Munis whatever number page report, there's a glossary. So like if I want to go look at building department revenues or whatever, that I can instead of literally having to go through page by page 
um, I can find out where it is. Or another way that would remedy that is um, what you provided, the three pages where you list department, other, or an article, and everybody is listed alphabetically. If they maybe could be listed as they appear in the MUNIS report. So if I know I'm looking for inspections and I get to something that inspections is obviously after that, I keep flipping. So that's just sort of a usability. Do you know, I don't know if I'm conveying what it is because um, I literally have to go through page by page by page to look for, um, and I'm using building. I'm sorry, thank you. So I, I would answer that in two ways. One is um, we, we do the revenue uh, by revenue sources, the, the big blocks that we use to file with the state. So we have fees and licenses and fines and taxes and motor vehicle excise tax and so forth. This current report does not break revenue down by department. If that's what you were looking for, I would say we will need to get wait until we redo our chart of accounts. EDA has created a new chart of accounts that would allow that kind of reporting, but under our current chart of accounts, that isn't so easy. So depending on what sort of information you're looking for, we could produce it, but it's just not as easy to produce as the reports that we put out here. Okay, um, and I guess I'll, I'll leave that for you to figure, but what, what I'm looking for is, um, I'm going to say I pick legal. Yeah. It appears on the first three face sheets, all the departments appear alphabetically. But then when I go to the 30, 40, 50 page Munis printout, um, it isn't alphabetically. I have okay. to go through page by page. So what I was saying two ways to remedy that is if, um, and especially on the departments, everything else there aren't that many entries for. Um, so I'm just trying to find a way that I can get through that. So either maybe change the, and it's mostly for departments. I don't mind flipping through pages looking for other and enterprise fund because they kind of stand out on their own. But, um, and then the, the other thing is um, perhaps um, with attorney Heim, and this is a way off to do thing. Um, similar to what we've done with the Selectman Handbook, the Town Bylaws, Town Manager Act, um, just do a quick uh, proof through this to make sure we are um, correct as, and we're still going through this process so everyone has to do it, you know, where it says Selectman, Select Board, those things. Um, but I know Attorney Heim has been swimming in that stuff and I bet he's found a way of search words that he knows appear there often and he can help fix that. It's not a biggie, it's just since we're going through that and we've done it with everything else. Certainly. And then my, uh, my last question is, when we had the mid-year report, um, I had queried about um, whether it was an optical illusion that it seemed as though um, the building department was uh, producing revenue far more than we anticipated. Is it, is it because everybody's home and they're building more? And the comment was, yes, that is um, bearing out to be the case. I can't find it in here. I'm sure it's in there. Are we still trending that we're, you know, 125, 140%, whatever the number was at mid-year for um, the building department? I see there's a, somewhere in Munis, there's a inspections category. It's about 514,000, but so can you speak to that or get me the information later? So uh, on the screen, I think Adam has highlighted what's called licenses and permits. Oh, okay. Those, uh, they're, those are all licenses and permits in the town, but the vast bulk of them are building permits, plumbing permits, and electrical permits. So uh, we had an estimated budget of $1.7 million, and in fact took in a little over $2 million. So um, we did show uh, a steady surplus in revenue there. It means that people are continuing to do work on their homes. Um, and uh, we, and in fact, even into FY21, just looked at the first two months this year and it, it continuing to see activity uh, through uh, building inspections and, and issuing those permits. So that's sort of good news that that's still trending up. I think it's at, I can see it's at 122%. And you're estimating looking at the first two quarters in 21 that that trend is continuing 
not dropping down. That is correct. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Cooler, Ms. Cody. I really do appreciate all this information. And I really do go, as my colleagues do, every single page of this. So <laughs> as we keep getting them, I'll get better acclimated to them. Or if I have to, I'll, I'll hit up uh, my FinCom buddy, Mr. DeCourcy, and have him help me find my way through it. Thank you. A pleasure. Thank you. And Mr. Diggins? Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, and also, I mean, I appreciate the report, the narrative. Um, it was very helpful and the tables right under it. So I just have some curiosity questions. That's all. I'll, I'll make these quick. Uh, um, so uh, you had mentioned that the hotel uh, revenue was, was uh, you expected to go down because of the third quarter. I'm just curious then why was it like the first two quarters that were so much higher than um, normal that we got such a surplus? We had, yeah, we were running at a very good rate. I think it was a combination of you know, the economy being strong and business being strong. Our hotel had expanded its number of rooms. So uh, we were taking in probably more revenue than our original estimate had anticipated. Gotcha. Uh, okay. So I think that was it. Great, great. Um, on the meals tax, I mean, that seems a little higher than um, expected to. Do you anticipate that falling off? I do. Again, we saw that in the, in the fourth quarter of the year uh, that that number went down. And just seeing activity in town, I know some restaurants are are in operation, but some are going out of business. So um, that one makes me a little nervous. Gotcha. And um, the the investments. I mean, I mean look, I understand a, a lot of the technical trading stuff. I mean, if you could maybe just like in in two or three sentences, what did they do? Did they like be go long futures on interest rates right before the <laughs> pandemic? That is huge. It's a huge. Uh, I think it is uh, in part, no, they didn't go into any kind of exotic investments. I know. I know, they I know. Just so, so the public at home knows they are very limited I know, by I know. law as I to how that. they can uh, yeah. invest. So I just want to make everybody who's listening <clears throat> know that that is the case. Um, so they do invest in bank accounts, in CDs. Uh, they have been very active in doing that. Um, and they've been able to, um, to bring in uh, a good amount of revenue. Because of that, and because of some of our concerns about other revenue sources in FY21, we did increase in the FY21 budget our uh, revenue estimate for interest and investments uh, up to $241,000 because we thought it would be get closer to what, uh, what we've actually been seeing. Uh, but I give uh, Phyllis Marshall, the treasurer collector, and her staff, uh, and, including Karen Riley, a lot of credit for doing a lot of work to make sure that uh, the ta taxpayers' money are being invested as best as they can be. Yeah, great job on that. Thanks for um, entertaining my curiosity questions. Being so, um, that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Carl. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, Firstly, through you, I'd like to thank the legal department for the $6.37 turn back. <laughs> Appreciate that, Attorney Heim. You're welcome. Um, no, this, this is, thank, in all seriousness, no, though, uh, thank you very much. This, this is incredibly um, helpful. And, uh, you know, you've spoken to a little bit of it. I mean, I guess I'm, I'm um, pleasantly surprised at how well we did, given that the um, the pandemic was was kicking in full force uh, in you know three and a half months um, before the end of the year. Um, we're seeing you know some trends in here that that um, uh, are, are giving us pause to to worry, and uh, some that kind of went maybe in our favor. I mean, this tells a bit of a story. I mean, you look at COA um, transportation. I mean, we've got a, a healthier balance than expected, but of course, the other side of that is we weren't able to uh, provide the service because we had to shut that down. Um, as you look forward, based on some of the, the, the trends in this quarter, and maybe some of what you're looking at in the first two quarters, what are one or two of your, your, your biggest worries, and, and maybe one or two of your, your areas of uh, greatest optimism? 
Um, I guess I'll start with the plus side. 78% uh, of our general fund revenue comes from property taxes. So we are very property tax dependent, which has its limitations, as you all know, but it is a very consistent source of revenue for us. So I think in the, or in the FY21, we will continue to see um, strong property tax collections. Um, I think if the pandemic goes on much longer past the first of the year, I would start to worry a little bit about people's ability on a larger scale to pay those taxes. But so far we have not seen that and we've been able to work with anybody who's had concerns. Again, the, the treasurer's office and the uh, Council on Aging have both done good jobs with that. Um, so the, the vast bulk of our revenue is from a steady source. I don't see declining. Um, I would also say on the positive side uh, on our enterprise funds, particularly in the recreation and rinks, um, Joe Connolly has done a great job of readjusting, um, moving things around. Um, you know, the rink is open already. Um, he's got a number of other programs uh, working or in the works to be able to supply services to people who lost their uh, after school care or child care. So um, I'm very optimistic about those things. On the water and sewer fund, I'm also optimistic because the board acted so quickly this year to set new water and sewer rates uh, last spring in time to have them affect the bills that went out uh, in August. That is a, uh, a very significant change in the timing that we've had here in town uh, for the last number of few, few years. And it will mean that our, um, our rates uh, our collections will be more timely and uh, I think help boost uh, the bottom line there. So those are some of the positives. Uh, on the negative side, I am concerned about um, hotel, motel tax and meals tax as we've are already talked about. I think also our um, motor vehicle excise tax is subject to economic impact and in fact, we level funded that um, estimate for FY21 and for the next few years because we and the Long Range Planning Committee um, both saw that, that that had an impact, the potential to be affected. Um, other than that, uh, and, and that is our, our biggest source of, uh, of local uh, receipts. The big question for me still is what's gonna happen with local aid um, we were basically level funded, essentially got a boost because of a rising enrollment, so that was good. Um, but um, I think it is a worry down the road if the state has significant uh, hits to its revenue collection, how that's going to affect their ability to fund our, our aid. So far, their collections, their tax collections this year haven't been bad, but we haven't really hit their big months yet. So we're watching that. Um, so those are I, I just a few highlights and lowlights, so to speak. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you. And I just want to thank Sandy and Ida for the presentation, all the work that goes into this report. I know it's easy for us to look at this, but I know a lot of hours go into putting these figures together. Um, I would just say that when this pandemic happened, we all expected the worst. And as of right now, we're getting through it and I think we know go going forward that some of these, some of our revenue sources might be at risk as, as we move forward in uncertainty. Although, you know, we're, where the enterprise friend funds lack, there's a business in the back end that's suffering too. So, you know, we certainly have to be cognizant of that. Um, but thank you for the report. And um, with that, do we have a motion to- we'll receive, Mr. Chair. From Ms. Mahan, seconded by Second. Mr. DeCourcy. Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan? Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote.
All right. Thank you, Sandy and Ida. Thank you all very much. All right. That brings us to our consent agenda. So we have meeting of minutes, August 30th, 2020. We have for approval, shop Arlington first banners in Arlington Center in Capitol Square from Ali Carter of the Economic Development Recovery Task Force. We have a request for a contractor drain layer license from Sean S. Tachi Excavating Inc. of 72 Meadow Road, Townsend, Mass. And we have the appointment of new election workers Susan Doctorow, 99 Westminster Avenue, Precinct 20. And from Mr. Diggins, do we have a motion? I have a motion to uh, accept the um, consent agenda. Okay. And Mr. DeCourcy? I second the motion. Okay. And Mrs. Mahan, any comments? No comments, thank you, Mr. Chair. And Mr. Carl, any comments? No comments, thank you. All right, on a motion to approve the consent agenda by Mr. Diggins, seconded by Mr. DeCourcy, Attorney Hine. This is Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Thank you. And that moves us to appointments. We have two appointments to the Commission for Arts and Culture. We have Christine Noah, term to expire June 30th, 2023, and Sarah Morgan Wu, term to expire June 30th, 2023. And I will go to Ms. Noah first. Hi. 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 If you just tell um, us your name and a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to join the commission. Absolutely. So my name is Christine Noah and I moved to Arlington about five months ago. I was living in Cambridge previously um, for about four years. I'm originally from Kentucky, um, but I have made New England my home. And um, when I moved to Arlington, I was really excited by how much of a community it felt. Um, and, you know, it seems like everybody really cares about the neighborhood and their neighbors and um, wanting to make Arlington a, a, a better place and um, there's so many volunteers and so I really wanted to, to be a part of that and um, I have a background in the arts. I've done theater basically my whole life and I studied theater and English in college, um, did writing, acting, directing, producing and then um, I moved into arts administration after college and um, specifically did a lot of work in development so grant writing and um, major gifts, special events, corporate giving, um, and board management is what I do right now. I work at the American Repertory Theater at Harvard. Um, and I also recently got my master's in management from Harvard as well. And so thinking about all that experience, it seems like ACAC would be a perfect fit for, um, you know, my passion for the arts, but also my creative and administrative skills. Um, and a way for me to get more involved in the community. So I'm really excited to, to get more involved with ACAC and start helping to build, um, you know, make Arlington an even more robust and, and vibrant place to live. Thank you, and thank you for your willingness to serve. Mr. Carl. Yeah, thank you very much. I mean, you bring phenomenal credentials. Um, the commission is very important to us and will be even more so right now in this time as uh, uh, people need to have some, um, access to the, to, um, the uh, uh, creative arts, um, I, I think to keep morale up as much as anything and hope. Um, and I'm always just really um, thrilled to have the opportunity to appoint um, folks who have, who have just moved here and have jumped right in to uh, contribute to the community. So welcome to Arlington and thank you very much for, um, for uh, stepping up and uh, volunteering for this. Thank you, and Mr. Diggins? You know, all I could do really is repeat what Ms. Kuro said. I mean, I'm really happy to welcome you aboard. I mean, I've done some work with some folks on ACAC. You'll probably be seeing me in some meetings here and there. I mean, um, uh, it's a good group. Uh, I look forward to working with you more. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan? Sorry. I actually have problems unmuting myself and I won't comment on that. Um, I want to thank Ms. Noah, Christine, um, as my colleague said, for, for jumping right in and, and 
volunteering your professionalism and your expertise. And we're always excited when we see people with experience in grant writing, whether it's uh, for the arts or otherwise, as well as sort of, um, I was looking at it, the other things you cited, I, I think especially intrinsic to the arts community um, in these current times, partnerships are, are vitally important. And you certainly seem to have networked um, amongst that uh, world and that profession. Um, and that's an added benefit to me. So uh, I, I look forward to what you'll be bringing to Arlington and as well as working with your fellow commissioners. So thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I also wanna thank Ms. Noah for her willingness to serve and, and uh, for your enthusiasm. Thank you. And again, thank you for taking the time. We know that these commissions can take up some personal time from everything that you have going on, but we really appreciate all the work that everyone does. All right, and with that, I will move to Ms. Morgan Wu. If you could just tell us a little bit about yourself and why you wanted to serve on the commission. Uh, yes, I have a gallery over in, in East Arlington and uh, have been doing this for about 20 years. I apologize, I'm not much of a public speaker. Um, uh -huh. I much, much prefer uh, one-on-one -on -one or small group encounters. And I, and I think the ACAC provides a platform for that kind of engagement. Um, I appreciate what Mr. Kiro had to say about given the current time and, and how we might find other ways to engage with each other, other ways to communicate or, um, and I just, I, when we, as you saw from my background, um, we've lived other places in the world. And when we came back to figure out what to do, Arlington was very appealing as a place um, that welcomed all sorts of arts and um, would allow the kind of engagement that we were looking for. So I, I am deeply honored to be part of the commission and I, I look forward to how I can contribute whenever, however, um, and thank you. Thank you. And I'll go back to Mr. Carroll. Thank you very much, and I'll just I'll just say again, thank you. I'm always impressed with the the, um, the backgrounds of folks who volunteer for our um, commissions, and I, I, I'm especially um, happy to see the background that you bring in um, uh, putting forward cross cultural programming as well um, through through some of your uh, businesses and and um, initiatives. So um, I'm I'm happy to move to uh, to uh, appoint. Uh, Ms. Morgan Wu and Ms. Noah uh, to the uh, Commission for Arts and Culture. Thank you. Thank you. And Mr. Dickens? I will second that. And once again, I mean, I can't really improve much on what Mr. Kiro said, but I have a question. You know, you mentioned in um, your, your letter uh, that when you decide to re come back to the U.S., you decide to relocate and come back, located in Arlington. Um, in no smart part because of efforts of ACAC. What, what was that? What were those efforts? I mean, what impressed you? What, what about ACAC uh, brought you to Arlington? I think we knew of Arlington because I had, I've actually lived in Arlington post-college um, when it was the hinterlands for downtown Boston. Things have changed a great deal uh, since then. But when we were trying to figure out where to open um, and we knew we didn't want to go back to Boston. It didn't have the vibe. It didn't have the same sort of engagement. There was probably just that sense of, for Arlington in particular, how all age demographics are, seem to, to live in the same and, and are seen on the street and, and are, are part of, of and, and just that sense when you walk through. And so, Part of the, that walking through is what ACAC has put up, the signage, the when you go online to search for something, it, uh, you, you encounter ACAC online. When I started asking what are all of these acronyms that are, um, seem to be part of, of Arlington, um, ACAC, you know, uh, ACA, uh, there's just yeah, too many. Right. Um, it, yeah. it, it's easy to, be, to find people to ask, what all that meant and how 
the town itself was making an effort to integrate that, not, not just in the arts, but in, in historical. Um, part of my background with the Athenaeum crosses that art and history um, piece of it. So I, I hope that answers your question. There was yeah. engagement, both one-on-one -on -one and online. Um, I, I don't know if you've seen it, but there's uh, sidewalk haikus out. Um, right, right, yeah. And right. so just that, that piece of it, no matter where you go, you're encountering something that ACAC has done. So. Well, that's great because we, we still, because you would be like a success story at ACAC. So, so I'm sure you'll replicate more of that. So thank you once again for coming aboard. Thank you. All right. And Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair and um, to Ms. Morgan Wu, Sarah also. Again, my sincere appreciation for um, stepping up in this way because as you just spoke to, um, ACAC is a very active committee, like many, if not all of the committees, some committees, commissions, boards that we have here in Arlington. Um, that's one of the things I really love about Arlington. We're so fortunate that um, we don't have committees or commissions just to put them down in name. They really are out there doing lots of things. Um, and I, I loved reading about your art gallery and, and locating it here in Arlington. And what I would say um, to also both of you that um, the Myrac uh, developers, they own some land up at 165 Rare, Mass Ave. This, I was unaware of this, is quite a um, robust um, artist uh, community, individuals who live up there um, and want to continue to um, have availability not only to live here but to um, be able to increase the arts and increase people's opportunities to see it so once the proposal goes along the board just to, took its initial vote I just wanted to give you both a heads up and you can the com ACAC committee may already be aware of it but um, the MIRAC developers have committed to um, in certain parts of their spaces to make it available to Arlington artists to display in whatever form inside and or outside. So I just kind of wanted to let you know that that's there. And when that goes through, um, it sort of seems like a natural marriage um, between that uh, development up there and in and, and the town. So again, thank you so much. And I just echo my colleagues' remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And thank you, uh, Morgan Wu, for selecting Arlington for the uh, object stories. Tyler, and secondly, your willingness uh, to serve on the commission. All right, and again, just thank you for your time, really, because we know everyone's time is precious. So your will, your willingness to serve is, is just great. And that's what makes this town is the great volunteers that work for us. All right, so we have a motion to approve. This is no one, Ms. Morgan. Uh, by Mr. Carl, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Hyde? Mrs. Lahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Curo? Yes. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. Thank you. All right. And that brings us to licenses and permits. We have for approval, food vendor license, number one taste, 165 Mass Avenue, Jack Sai. Is Mr. Sai with us? Mr. Sai, can you hear us? Hello? Hi, can you hear us? Yeah, I can hear you. Hi, if you can just uh, tell us a little bit about yourself and your application. Hi, my name is Jack Sai. Uh, we're applying for the you know, food vendor license for number one taste. We started our business in Belmont and uh, we've expanded over to Melrose. And what we do is uh, Chinese American food. And, okay. you know, we have a lot of customers in Arlington and, you know, we have the chance to move over here to you know provide our service. All right, thank you. And we do have our inspection reports posted on the agenda 
from with no objections from all but the building department we did get a, an inspection report today from the building department and they had no objections as well so i will turn to the board uh mr corsi uh thank you mr chairman uh move approval of, of the uh food vendor license all right and mr carl thank you very much i'll i'll second the motion i just just one clarification um I think it might just be a, a, a typo on the um, application. It, maybe I'm just not reading it correctly. The um, Sunday hours are 12 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Is that? Uh, 12, 12 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. Okay. Okay. Uh, must be my eyes. It looked like 9.30 a.m. I know you do have uh, two nights that you, you go past midnight to 2 a.m. But um, yeah. Great. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you for investing in Arlington. Oh, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you. And Mrs. Mahan. Sorry about that. Um, did Mr. Carroll second that? Or is it? Yes. Okay. Right. Um, it, everything uh, looks great to me. I, like my colleagues have gone through everything. I see you have something from um, the Yankee company. The only thing that I don't see in here, <clears throat> um, but I know you're aware of is, um, because you've done this kind of business before, is a, a, the maintenance plan of what's gonna get done when and when it gets picked up. And, um, but I know you're well aware of that and how to do that, in especially in terms of what the bylaws are for when um, uh, large trucks can come in and uh, pick up trash, things like that. And if you have any neighbors around, if you haven't already, you may have. Um, it's always nice to you can meet each other and um, they know who to go to if there's something that it, you know they really like about it or something that they have a question about. So, but thank you so much and welcome to Arlington. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Hello, um, I'm, I am. I live in the East, close by. I'm looking forward to to checking you out. I am, have nothing more to add. Thanks for doing business with us. Or do it, excuse me, thanks for doing business in Arlington. Thank you very much. We're all very excited and ready to work. And again, just thank you for choosing Arlington to, uh, to promote your business and we're excited to, to try it out. So on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy, seconded by Mr. Carroll, Attorney Hyman. Ms. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. And thank you, Mr. Sai. Thank you. All right. So next on our agenda is item number nine on a discussion, Black Lives Banner. Our town manager, Mr. Chaplain. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'll, I'll be uh, relatively brief as I know the board um, likely has thoughts and wants to talk about this issue, but what I would put before the board tonight, um, I guess to start is a word of thanks for leading and leading along with the Human Rights Commission and putting the Black Lives Matter banner on town hall, what is I think several months ago now, um, in in what I saw as a, as a move towards a clear statement of wanting to pursue racial equity in the community. Um, and I think, you know, we're one of only really a small handful of communities that have put such a clear statement on, uh, on the seat of government at a town hall or city hall. Uh, but tonight, um, what my proposal for the board to consider is, is to remove the banner at the end of September uh, so on, uh, after September 30th, uh, and then allow me working with the Human Rights Commission, Jill Harvey, our DEI coordinator, to work with a yet to be fully identified group of stakeholders to figure out uh, how that message or a similar message can be displayed elsewhere in town uh, and when it should be displayed in town. So that would be, uh, that's what I'm asking for the board to consider tonight. All right, so I will turn to the board for discussion, comments, motions. Uh, Mr. Carl. Um, thank you very much. And I'm, I'm gonna to apologize at the outset because I, I have a lot of, lot of thoughts, um, comments and, uh, and a motion. Um, 
So I've been thinking a lot about recent events in Arlington and lessons to be learned from the past, um, especially over this past week. And in particular, I've been remembering uh, one Saturday night, uh, 19 years ago, when hundreds of Arlington homes had hate literature dropped on their lawns by a West Virginia-based white supremacist group, the National Alliance. The flyers targeted the Lost Boys of Sudan and St. Paul's Lutheran Church, which had arranged host families for many of the refugees. And Arlington Police Patrol spotted the literature drop at 3 a.m. and arranged for police officers to remove most of these obscene leaflets before residents awakened. So following this incident, the Human Rights Commission planned a vigil to show community support for the Lost Boys and resistance to these intimidation efforts. And then 9-11 happened. Uh, suddenly the vigil took on additional meaning. Arlingtonians came together and shared our outrage over the inhumanity that could lead white supremacists to invade the safe haven that we had provided to young people fleeing war on the African continent. And we grieved deeply over the attacks by religious extremists, ruthlessly slaughtered thousands of American civilians, 415 first responders, 55 military personnel, 33 airplane crew members, and hundreds of individuals from over 90 countries. Our residents counted relatives and friends among the victims. Gathering in front of town hall, we were united. We stood shoulder to shoulder and it was the largest gathering I've ever seen in Arlington. This summer, we felt a fleeting spark of such unity and shared outrage following the death of George Floyd and an elevated awareness about the struggles and fear faced by our black brothers and sisters in this country not only in relation to policing practices, but also in the pursuit of housing and educational opportunities, economic advancement, and in the face of healthcare disparities and the disproportionate impact of COVID-19. Hundreds of residents stood in Arlington Center and along Mass Ave over weeks and months, and many continue to do so. We raised the Black Lives Matter banner on Town Hall in time for Juneteenth, and we continue to display it on Black Lives Matter Day and throughout our summer series of community conversations. As our work has continued, we've learned a lot, not, not least of which is that this work is destined to continue for years and that our sense of unity is fragile. Last week, unlike 19 years ago, residents were not standing shoulder to shoulder. Instead, we saw three competing rallies in Arlington Center. Many Arlington residents participated, but each of these protests also drew the participation of outside groups with little connection to our town. This led to confusion and questions about the affiliations, nature, or legitimacy of at least three or four organizations that announced plans throughout the week to come to Arlington and insert themselves into our local debates. Mischaracterizations of the simple phrase Black Lives Matter are and were, in my opinion, off the mark and do nothing to advance trust between law enforcement and communities of color. But at the same time, inflammatory language that seemed to equate our police officers and their families with fascists were beyond the pale and garner no support or respect from me. And I'd venture to guess any of my colleagues or the vast majority of Arlington residents who appreciate the work that our officers do on a daily basis. It's time for us to realize that both black parents and public safety families in our country share a common and pervasive fear that when their loved ones walk out the door, they will not return. When I chaired the Human Rights Commission, there was an initiative to seek designation for Arlington as a no place for hate community. This campaign was put forward by Chief Ryan and included participation by the APD, HRC, Diversity Task Group, and many residents, including our then future Cindy Friedman, who was very active. The sponsoring organization was the Anti-Defamation League, which had been and continues to be an important partner in the fight for justice and against hate. We encountered a dilemma though. At the time, the ADL's national leadership resisted labeling the slaughter of Armenians by the Ottoman Empire as genocide and actively worked against congressional resolutions that would do so. This position seemed incompatible with the sponsorship of a No Place for Hate program. And we heard expressions of deep concern from many members of Arlington's Armenian community, whose parents and grandparents had lived through the atrocities of the early 20th century. Our solution was to localize our efforts. 
we decided to jettison the baggage of a national organization and we withdrew from the No Place for Hate program, but we maintained our local coalition under the umbrella of Arlington Community Threads. It is time to localize our discussions once again. I'm heartened to see so many Arlington homes and faith communities displaying signs of support for the idea that until we value black lives as much as all other lives, we're poorer as a society. In my own home, we display several signs, which were handmade by my daughter. One of them is a list of affirmations, similar to that found outside many Arlington homes. It says, in this house, we believe black lives matter, women's rights are human rights, no human is illegal, science is real, love is love, kindness is everything. Everyone coming to our front door knows where we stand on these basic beliefs. Similarly, no one coming to town hall should have any doubt about the full breadth of our own municipal affirmations as debated and adopted by town meeting over a quarter century ago and enshrined with a number of amendments in our bylaws as the policy of the town of Arlington. And I quote, to bring about the elimination of prejudice, intolerance, bigotry, unlawful discrimination, threats, coercion, or intimidation based upon an individual's race, color, religious views, national origin, sex, gender identity or expression, citizenship, age, ancestry, family marital status, sexual orientation, disability, source of income, or military status. These are the words that should greet visitors to our seat of government and which should serve as the starting point for our discussions and debates going forward. They aren't catchy. They don't fit on a bumper sticker. They require the reader to stop and think, and they contain the distilled understanding and compassionate commitments of several generations of Arlington policymakers. Accordingly, if it's appropriate, I move as follows. That the select board requests the town manager to cause to be displayed near the entryway to town hall, that portion of Title II, Article 9, Section 2, Subsection C of the bylaws of the Town of Arlington as pertains to its purpose and enumerated protected classes, it's the piece that I just read, with temporary exceptions at the town manager's discretion to accommodate display needs for town sponsored or sanctioned events or initiatives. Our challenge as we move forward is to live up to the letter and spirit of our bylaws, not only in calling out and resisting hate crimes and incidents and promoting diversity, but also in engaging in difficult and substantive policy discussions. We must work to correct the harm, harmful legacies of prejudicial policies and practices and to root out their present manifestations as we seek to further equity and inclusion in the realms of public health and safety, human services, education, housing, and more. We're coming off a summer where we've had many such discussions, which will culminate in next week's community roundtable with Lieutenant Pedrini, who's quite frankly, whose newsletter article set in motion many of the tensions we've experienced over the last two years. I expect we'll have further opportunities to debate policy choices at the upcoming special town meeting and over the years to come. And in many ways, our young people are leading the way. Two weeks ago, I had the opportunity to listen in to an online conference between leaders of the Arlington High School Anti-Racism Working Group and their peers around the Commonwealth. The passion, eloquence, and, and sheer professionalism of our students as they discussed ways to make their school a better place for all filled me with a firm belief that Arlington is up to the challenges of today and, and for the future. So thank you for enduring my lengthy remarks and I respectfully request your support for uh, this motion. Thank you. As part of your motion is the motion to also remove the banner as requested by the town manager. Yeah, I support the, yeah, we can add to support support this. Right, the, that the, that the bylaw language should be language somewhere near the entry to, to town hall. Mr. Diggins? Let's look at that motion. Um, and, and Mr. Curo said a lot of good things and I uh, agree uh, with them. Um, Hey, my goal here is to maximize the harmony on this board for, for this issue, because uh, as we all know, uh, it's a, uh, there's a, a lot to this effort you know, that I would say uh, pretty much 
the vast majority of us in town are allies you know, in the overall cause. I mean, and, and so I don't really want to do anything to alienate the people who I mean, are, are, are fighting the battles against racism and all of the inequalities. I mean, and so uh, I also know um, that a unity you know, is, is fleeting at best speed. Uh, uh, and, and so uh, I will always expect there to be some um, tension, you know, some disagreement, uh, and sometimes more of it rather than, than less of it. And, uh, and although uh, I understand the, the motive, the very good motivations um, behind having signs in, on town hall, uh, as I said, a couple of months ago, or when we you know, were first grappling with this issue since I've been on a select board, uh, I feel that uh, to have no um, banner on town hall is perhaps, not perhaps, I think is more inclusive. Uh, as I said several times since, the, I feel that regardless of how um, racist, sexist, homophobic, anti-immigrant, you may be, you need to feel that your government works for you and that it's gonna protect you. That's not to say that I don't support having places that are owned by town, government property, espouse the values of, of the vast majority of the citizens. So I'm all in favor of banners or whatever on um, light poles and other types of government property. But there are certain places like town hall, the police station, the fire station, uh, the schools. If we had a courthouse, we had, uh, hospitals, we had, they're just places where I feel that that uh, we just need to be more inclusive by not having uh, any, any signs. And that goes not only for uh, BLM, but also pride signs. We had, uh, so, uh, but I very much think that what Mr. Kiro has come up with is a really good idea. I mean, it is in, in um, it's encapsulated in our bylaws. I mean, uh, it would be, uh, I think, much more permanent. I mean, uh, much more lasting. Uh, it's a, um, it's a great idea. It is supported. Thank you, Mr. Mahan. Um. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Was that, did Mr. Diggins second, second Mr. Carroll's motion? And I didn't write it down? I believe so. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm actually gonna go a little long myself, which means my new business won't be as long. I wasn't sure um, where I would address this appropriately. And I too wanna thank my colleague, Mr. Carroll, um, for obviously taking a lot of time and thought and reflection um, in his remarks and his proposals, um, which I agree with. Um, wholeheartedly. Uh, what I wanted to talk under new business, but I think it is applicable under this is, um, as all my colleagues know, um, my daughter's third and final meaning third planning wedding was on Labor Day. So I wasn't really um, on top of Arlington events, checking my email and things like that. When I checked back in on Tuesday after Labor Day, I was so dismayed and disheartened at what I saw the current state of Arlington, um, first with the misinformation that um, tied the Back the Blue local group to a national hate group. And I did have a conversation with the town manager that um, there should have been some fact checking there. Um, and um, that unfortunately in my mind set up the uh, untoward events up until then um, all the Arlington groups that have ga gathered or Arlington based have been pretty peaceful. You know, sometimes there's some charge emotion in terms of language, but nothing beyond that. Um, I did ask the town manager, um, especially with, um, there's a similar group of people that provide, in my opinion, misinformation, um, to not um, take them at their word and, and not let that happen again. I was hoping that the same way the message got out with the misinformation tying this group to a national group, I think the acronym was ACT, that um, to make that correction, um, the manager would make it the way he got it out, which was on his video message and statement on behalf of the town. And he chose not to do that, um, which I disagreed with, but um, he did provide me with um, four lines that I'll read that he provided to 
your Arlington.com and I believe Arlington Patch. So I uh, just went to that audience. In the first paragraph, I think it's positive, but then I think the second paragraph just totally negates it. And I'm not happy with that. And I've shared with the town manager that. Um, his response to that limited press, and I read your Arlington all the time. I'm glad to hear that Thursday's event organizers are disavowing any affiliation with the hate group. And, if, and I'm adding here, that's not an affiliation that they said they had. It's what our town manager stated. And then he continues, I hope that these statements lead to a peaceful protest on Thursday. I can tell you they didn't, and I'll, I'll speak to that in a second. That's me editorializing again. Then this is where you do the second paragraph and you kind of take that all back in my opinion. Um, I'm saying this to the local chapter, similar to when Arlington residents came to me and um, were pleading with me to take down the Black Lives Matter banner and they cited the national organization, which is a socialist political uh, group designed to uh, create disobedience, um, uh, especially against our law enforcement officers, which sometimes leads to violence. But um, the manager said, I further add that the group organizing Thursday's event may want to consider operating under a name that is nearly identical to the name of a hate group. In this world of dog whistles and virtue signaling, we all need to be careful with our words if we want our messages to be heard clearly. And so what I would say to that is when I got those calls from people, Arlington residents um, who have supported me, and if some of them said they won't anymore, and that's their right to do, that Black Lives Matter banner um, that we've um, displayed proudly in front of town hall had no affiliation with the national um, group that they cited of Black Lives Matter. You know, no, nobody owns the words. Um, and I defended that vigorously and I will do that to this day. But I, I was extremely upset at, um, in the manager's words, are heard by many and, and taken as he is the person speaking for the town doing the day-to-day -day business. Unfortunately, what they did was, instead of having two Arlington-based groups um, that demonstrated peacefully in front of Town Hall and down by Whittemore Robbins, uh, the group across the street, and I, I viewed all the dash cam video and people were posting on Facebook and things like that, um, for the group of uh, 75 or 100 or so across the street, I saw one Arlington resident, um, a younger resident, and I know law enforcement, they understand that part of their job is to go out there, part of their job is to listen to people saying things that we probably wouldn't say to any other employee, part of their job is to get pushed and shoved, part of their job is to have things pushed in their face, like one woman had a little pig squeaky toy that she kept pushing in officer's face and saying, um, all cops are pigs, all cops should die. I heard it on the video. And unfortunately, they understand sometimes you know, they're going to get spit at and, and things like that. Unfortunately, because of the misinformation, in my opinion, that got out, that crowd that came in went beyond. And we had several officers who were attacked and assaulted. One who I think, you know, if it leaves a bruise or cuts the skin, I think um, that's something that should be um, acted upon. But if you ask any Arlington police officer, they're just going to keep take, taking that, um, those attacks and assaults because um, in my opinion, I don't think they're being supported as much as they should. I think it's, um, and, and to that end, I will give the manager credit. He did send a, in a memo to the police station on Friday to all the women and men of the Arlington Police Department. I am writing today to express my most sincere thanks and appreciation for your commendable efforts in the face of a very, diff a very difficult circumstances yesterday. From what I have heard and observed, you all dispatched your duties with professionalism and care that has long been the hallmark of the Arlington Police Department. Without question, you all highlighted the value that you provide as members of the Arlington community. I also understand that some of you were subjected to both verbal and physical attacks. And while I am very sorry to hear that this happened, I am also proud to know that you maintained your professionalism and integrity in the face of these assaults. I am proud of the Arlington Police Department in good times and bad, I had to throw that in. And you showed the whole community yesterday that you are more than deserving of that pride. I want you all to know that I support you in the work that you do and I appreciate all that you do to keep Arlington safe. So I will give credit for that. But what I'm extremely upset about besides the assaults, which now for some reason, 
um, outside groups feel comfortable doing that. Um, they don't even get restorative justice. But there have been several incidents. Um, the women and men of the police department, they understand um, they're doing a job where they might not come home that night. And their families know that. But what they don't accept, and I don't accept, when they're doing that job, uh, they understand these assaults and harassment and, and verbal attacks are par for the course, but that doesn't include their families. And I am so upset that there have been documented reports, and I've discussed this with some human rights commissioners, some, I guess you could say on the lower end, um, children of police, Arlington police officers who have been harassed, bullied, threatened, told their mother or father is a Nazi, is a murderer, should be shot. And we also have, and, and I haven't heard one Arlington police officer complain when those remarks were directed to them. They get it. But it's gone beyond. It's gone to the family. We even have videos of, uh, and I haven't seen the video and I don't want to see it, but I know it exists, of a gentleman um, going up to one of our Arlington police officers, and I think he even did it at the Arlington police station, um, saying what he said about the police officer, but then talking about his wife and how she should be treated. And I won't repeat what he said. And, and what I'm dismayed about is no action has been taken on any of those reports. We have reports in there. We have video statements. Um, I know if it was any one of, you know, if anyone said to my husband what this individual said they wanted to do to me, um, that that would not, that would stop right there. So I'm, I'm imploring uh, through the town manager, um, please continue to get the message out that was just sent to the men and women of the police department. <clears throat> I'm, and I'm not getting from people who are out there, they're asking why the town doesn't support the Arlington Police Department anymore, more, and it's, it's, it's skewing over into the fire department. Um, I told them that is not the case. Um, I know the board that I sit on, um, what the managers put out, I've, I've indicated to them that I've had a uh, conversation with them. Um, pretty, mu pretty much have said what I've said here, because I like to say to the person first. Um, I want to get back to Arlington used to um, proclaim how proud we were of our Arlington Police Department. Um, put it up nationally against any police department in the, in the country, whether it's the opioid crisis, whether it's a decade ago hiding, um, hiring a mental health professional to go out on these calls with officers as requested by that professional. Um, Arlington has been ahead of, we started two years ago, uh, Campaign Zero, adopting the points, uh, de-escalation courses. Uh, so I'd like to get it back out there that you know, through our town manager, we do value the police department, that these actions, alleged actions um, that have been reported and videotaped will be looked into. Um, they won't be tolerated anymore. And I, I guess my personal feeling is if in the future, any one of our police officers or anybody, uh, a town employee union or not, um, is assaulted to the point that there's bruising or cut skin, that A, they don't feel afraid to seek medical help and B, they know that um, we will take that seriously and, and deal with that in the future. So uh, I understand the Lieutenant Padrini um, issue uh, and people rightfully so um, uh, are dismayed that he's still on our police force, you know, going on three years now. But I would beg um, the residents of Arlington, um, whatever your feelings of, about the racist remarks that Lieutenant Padrini eschewed, it does not apply to the entire Arlington Police Department. It happens sometimes in professions. I was on the board when we hired a town manager that I did, begged my colleagues and pleaded that then colleagues not to hire uh, because he was not a gentleman. I'll leave it like that. Uh, we did hire him in both from and sign his contract. And unfortunately, he left under shame and embarrassment. Um, now, does that mean every town manager that I interviewed in the future, I painted with that brush? And, and no, that's not what it is. I, I always look for a town manager that falls more on the side of unions and, and working people, but town managers, they come from management, so it's gonna lean the other way. Um, so I, I just want to uh, express these thoughts and I'll have something else in new business because when I spoke with the uh, town manager, 
Uh, I think that he got, his words to me was, uh, I'm pretty clear uh, about my thoughts, um, but um, he necessarily didn't have that clarity with my colleagues, which I know at least on one of the issues I've spoken about, I know at least one of my colleagues shares um, similar view. It's something I'll speak to under new business, but because we're precluded under the open meeting law, um, I can't really, I, I have a sense of my co colleagues and their commitment to all our town employees. Um, we've done, I've done the exact same thing when the town manager twice um, was ready to go to a, another city or town and we made, and it was because of the effects of the job, not so much on him, but his family. And we made sure we uh, took steps to take care of that. And I, I just want, um, we do that for our police officers and now it unfortunately seems like it's, it's trending into our firefighters and I'll speak to that in the new business. So, and thank you again, Mr. Kiro. I mean that with all sincerity. Um, you articulated and captured this um, in a fine, better format than I could. And like uh, everyone I know who is a person of color, including my close relatives, the signs and the banners and the statements are great reinforcers, but it's the actions, like the students' actions, like the former Metco high school students and students of color who lived in Arlington who have been trying to do um, mentoring program since 2010, which I've been trying to work on. Um, I brought it up again with the manager in June. I wanted to raise it with Jillian Harvey. He ensured me he'd be following through on that. So while I understand the value and I want to get the message out in as many forms as we can, it's our actions that really are going to define if there's a difference now than there was in 1991 when Rodney King was assaulted and brutally beaten, whether it was back in the 60s um, for that civil rights movement and before. So um, I'm, um, I'm excited to be a part of this. Um, I'm along with my colleagues, I'm committed to doing everything we can. Big thing I think is conversations and changing habits. So thank you, Mr. Chair, for letting me say those remarks. I can't hear Mr. Hurd, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Corsi. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And um, I also support Mr. Cura's motion. I just want to say a couple words. It, it, we, um, back on June 8th, we had voted to um, display the, the, the Black Lives Matter banner. And, and at that time, I, I said, you know, we, we shouldn't be doing this to, to pat ourselves on the back. And, and we, we should be doing this um, and, and be taking action um, go, going forward. And, and what that will require is a, is a lot of difficult discussions and getting comfortable with the uncomfortable. And, you know, we still have a ways to go with that. And, and as, as Mrs. Mahan just said, we, we need to keep talking and we need to have conversations. We have to try to move, move forward. And, and at the time it was understood that there would be a period of time that the banner um, would be displayed. So I, I, I support the, 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 the September 30th date. But I do want to say a couple of other things. And, and one of the things that is, I've learned personally is we've, um, over, over the past few months is, is it, to me, this isn't a zero sum game that if you are support Black Lives Matter, which we did as a board to, to put the banner up, that does not mean that you don't support our local police department, and, and Mrs. Mahan said it, Mr. Mr. Kerr said it, we, we do support the work of our Arlington Police Department, and, and I, I'm, I'm sorry if that, um, if there are those that feel that that, that has not been the case, but I, I, I know last week was a very difficult afternoon for the police department and formed admirably um, in very difficult circumstances with a lot of unknowns in terms of what was before them that day. Um, and I, I spoke to Chief Flaherty after that and, and, and thanked her uh, for that and thank, thank the entire police department for that. Um, but I do want to say, I, I think as we go forward, actions will matter and actions, you know, to, no matter where you are in, in, in your feelings, we, we need to continue to have discussions and, and recognize issues that affect us on the national level on the local level and, and, and in our daily lives. And, and I, you know, this isn't the end of the discussion. This discussion needs to continue and, and we need to be willing to have those uncomfortable 
conversations and, and, and understand things and, and move forward. Thank you. And I, I guess I would start by just asking Mr. Carter, I just want to clarify as to what we're talking about because I mean, it, whether it's something that uh, you would anticipate being affixed to the building, which would require the board's approval or just something that, in a freestanding like easel type format, which is generally in the manager's discretion because, you know, right, certainly right. would, it would change. Right. The, 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 word, the wording of my, of my motion is, is near the entry. So yeah. what, whether it's, it's above or it's on, on one of the boards out front or once yeah. we're back to normal life, um, uh, on on one of the the bulletin boards as you walk into to to town sure. hall, like large enough to be legible. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. All right, because I just you know I I want to clarify to people that are watching that I don't think the intent is that we're going to have another large banner hanging in above the doors where I, I anticipate this is something more permanent would be you know, in some sort of freestanding stand that we could even build for the specific purpose or once we put it inside, inside the banners. But, you know, I don't think we're replacing one banner for another banner. Um, this is sort of a separate issue from the banner that we're taking down. No, but the, the yeah. intent, the intent is, I, I, ideally, I would like to see um, that portion of the policy of Arlington displayed somewhere near the entry by the time that the, the the manager takes down the the, um, the the current banner, okay, that that's that, that's 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 where I'm at. All right, and I certainly if think that's that, feasible. If that's yeah. feasible, and I certainly think those words are important, and certainly a statement statement of values of this town. Um, and I'll support the motion. I you know we back in June we all gathered, we all voted to raise the banner, we all gathered to raise the banner. We did so with the town manager, we did so with the chief of police, and we did so, so with a number of members of the Arlington Police Department who supported our efforts. And we raised the banner in response to a really horrific event that happened, the murder of George Floyd. But we also have been doing the, this work for years and it came in the midst in, this was a statement that this town it was we were never ascribing to any specific group when we named when we raised that banner it was just a policy statement that we've been identified we've been working with racial equity training and we've been dealing with this and we were affirming that we as a town understand that institutional racial racism still exists at many levels and structural racism exists at many levels. To me, that we never raised that banner to direct that towards the Arlington Police Department and quite the opposite. I think it was always our intent to say to other people, we affirm that Black Lives Matter map, that Black Lives Matter in to the rest of the country where there are issues in policing, look at our police department because our models of community policing that we have instituted over the past so many years have really been effective. And you know, we, re we have many officers that are just shining examples of what it means to serve a community, a lot of whom grew up here. Um, just to pull one officer out, particularly someone like our canine officer, Officer Hogan, you go around town, you can't run into somebody who Officer Hogan hasn't done a favor for or helped out or gone, done something beyond what is in his job description to do. And, you know, we have many, many officers that do the same, that they, you know, in, even in the midst of adversary, adversity, go out and serve the community and do so in a really stand up way. And as Mr. Corsi said, we, you know, we keep getting into this mode where, you know, it's almost like you have to pick a side and that's not the case here. You know, we as a community should be able to say, you know, we affirm that Black Lives Matter and while at the same time saying we support the men and women of the Arlington Police Department 
those two notions are not contradictory and people should be able to you know if we, we get so caught up in banners and signs and you know someone is trying to interpret the someone else's motivation for putting a particular sign out and it's just not right and so someone in town should be able to put a black lives matter banner out in front of their house and they should be able to put a we support our local law enforcement banner in front of the house too because those are not those two those two notions work should work hand in hand you know we have an amazing police department and you know the, we've all been back and forth and up and down with in the wake of the writings of lieutenant Padrini, but those writings don't reflect on the work of the other officers the, the men and women that have been for year for the past you know so many years but particularly in the past few years going to work and might not you know haven't been treated with the, the respect that they deserve and it, you know it is time for us to make to declare you know as a board as a town that you know we still affirm this notion that black lives matter we are still going to commit to identifying structural institutional racism anything that we can do to continue to implement and work on policies in town that help to fight that but at the same time we need to as a town show respect to the officers and we need to recognize that we have an amazing police department and our you know again we really have the type of policing that they should be teaching in other parts of the country that where things aren't going so well so i'll support the motion um mr diggins do you have anything to add yeah i have two questions which are just points of clarification so my understanding is that the the um, the banner is going to be up until the end of september september 30th September 30th. So here's here are my questions. To, um, so why why um, why um, 16 more days? Because I think we have a good sense of what's going to happen in the interim. And, and the second is is there some kind of um, ceremony that we generally have when we bring down banners? So the answer is I think no to the second. Um, I'll go to the town manager for the first question. I, I simply offered that as a time so that it didn't seem like the town was acting in any haste in taking it down. Should the board want to pursue a different date? That's yeah. fine by me. I think it's just a, for a date certain. Um, and while we're right in the middle of September right now, that's probably just the appropriate transition date. Right. So can I continue? Sure. Hey, well, I would like to advocate for maybe sooner and, and maybe a little bit of uh, uh, ceremony in taking it down. Uh, but I'm going to defer to you all uh, with more experience I mean, um, on this because it comes up, it, it would require me more involvement, uh, but, but um, it would be something along the lines of affirming that this is not I mean, being taken down out of fear and, uh, and and that we do mean adhere to I me mean, what was the intention what is meant me by blm and uh and and um so so that's it i put it out there as a suggestion and uh and we can we can we can go with the current motion but if anyone uh, who made the first motion wants to amend it that's fine if they don't it's fine too mr carl yeah, uh, yeah, Mr. Diggins, I, I, I'm actually comfortable with the town manager's um, timeline for two reasons. I mean, the first is that it gets us, we, we kept this banner up through our community conversations and it gets us past that final one. The, the one that really, I, I think, is, it has garnered the most, most attention. Um, and the second reason is if we do adopt my, my motion and we are able to arrange on one of the surfaces, either the sandwich board or, or whatnot out front, the display of of, um, of our policy. I, I'd like to see that in place before we we we, we take down the banner. 
Um, so I, I'm feeling comfortable with the motion as it's as it is in the time frame that the that the that the manager has um, has put forward. Yeah, Mr. Diggins, I'm totally fine with that. I mean, I, I get it, and uh, so thank you very much. And... All right, and any further comment by wave of the hand? All right, so we have on a motion by Mr. Carl, seconded by Mr. Diggins. Attorney Hahn? Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. Thank you. All right. And so that takes us to our open form, in, except in unusual circumstances, any matter presented for consideration of the board shall neither be acted upon nor decision made the night of the presentation in accordance with the policy under which the open forum was established. It should be noted that there is a three minute time limit to present a concern or request. So anyone wishing to speak under the open forum right now can use the raise hand function on the Zoom app. And I apologize, I always forget, is it star six, seven? Star nine. Star nine on your, if you're calling in by phone. Wasn't star six, seven the number you'd use to call somebody back if you had a missed call? Is that star, seven? star six, nine, I think? It was in my head. I used to have a lot of prank calls as a kid. So there's two hands raised so far. Yep. Uh, Jordan Weinstein and Donna Kelly Williams. All right. Give it another minute. Anyone else? There are no other hands raised right now. All right. You can promote Mr. Weinstein. Hi there. Can you hear me? Yep, we can hear you. If you can just state your name and address for the record. Yeah, I'm uh, Jordan Weinstein, 23 Lennon Road in Arlington. Um, I want to thank uh, Joe Curo for his uh, well-written uh, talk uh, and agree with him that Black Lives Matter uh, do, uh, was an appropriate banner to put and that the town supported it. Um, and I also feel uh, dismayed that the town doesn't seem to be standing shoulder to shoulder that it might have uh, in the past. And Joe gave some examples of that. However, um, I feel that there, uh, where I began to disagree with Joe was his taking issue with accusations of uh, fascism or the word fascist being used uh, about at least one member of the police force and that is Lieutenant Rick Pedrini. And I agree with Diane that actions speak louder than words and she made that point uh, very well. But what's missing here is that a lot of words are being used to say how uh, abhorrent white supremacy is to this board and to the town and how much you all support uh, the uh, goals and, and, the, uh, and the meaning of the, the term Black Lives Matter. But if actions are truly uh, what count, then what's going on is that we have a cancer upon the politics or the political uh, uh, process here in Arlington uh, by the name of one police uh, lieutenant, Rick Pedrini. And as long as Rick Pedrini remains on the force and is protected by you all, uh, for whatever reason it is, and I know that a lot of uh, reasons have been given, uh, but he is a cancer on, on the ability for all of us to stand shoulder to shoulder. And uh, even if you had made at least an attempt to remove him, but failed in that attempt, that would have gone a long way uh, to express unity and your 
uh, uh, backing of Black Lives Matter and the lives of all kinds of marginalized people. In terms of the uh, back the blue and the uh, accusation uh, that Diane made that it was a spurious connection to white supremacy, I want to point out that maybe the name and maybe this organization wasn't part of a nationwide white supremacist, uh, supremacist organization. But one of the one of the organizers of this uh, back the blue uh, rally in front of town hall is a, an ongoing member of uh, and contributor to a white supremacy website called Turtle Boy Sports, which posted recently, and they also have a Facebook page. So there is a connection to white supremacy and uh, at least this, this organizer or one of the organizers of this rally. So it's not uh, beyond the pale to make mm -hmm. that kind of a charge. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and one last thing I can <clears throat> say is that... Um, <clears throat> you are at just over three minutes, so if you can just wrap up this thought. I just want to leave you with, with this, that <clears throat> Lieutenant Pedrini, as long as he stays on the force and as long as you do not at least make an attempt to remove him is going to continue to generate this kind of uh, conflict. All right, thank you, Mr. Weinstein. All right, if we can promote Ms. Kelly Williams. Hi, Donna, can you hear us? To unmute. Hi, good evening, everyone. Thank you for this opportunity to, um, to bring my issue forward to all of you. My ask tonight is for reconsideration. Sorry, can, just for our, our minutes, can you just state your full oh, name sure. and address? Sorry. Sure. My name is Donna, D O N N A, Kelly, K E L L Y hyphen Williams. I live at 110 Mary Street, and over my right shoulder is my husband, who also lives at 110 Mary Street. So thank you for this opportunity um, to address um, the select board. Um, my request is for a reconsideration of an approval that was made on August 17th regarding the shared Mary Street pilot proposal as it was pre presented to all of you. I have been a resident of Mary Street and Wilson Ave now, um, that's where I started out for over 40 years. Um, I have seen what the town has done to make Mary Street a safer street um, when 35 years ago we brought before the, the select board at the time our concerns with the cut through of Mary Street being used as a way to avoid the traffic on Lake Street. The institution of the do not enter signs during those traffic times where we saw the um, the adverse effects of having cars speeding down Mary Street, especially at the time when we were asking our children to walk to school um, and seeing the children playing in the streets. So fast forward to a proposal that you received regarding a pilot to make Mary Street a shared street, um, actually opening up those avenues to have uh, local access to come down the street, also to um, when I looked at the proposal after it was approved, um, it, it was a significant change from the way it was presented to the number of people that signed on in support of this proposal going forward. People were asked to sign on to support a, a shared street concept. And, that, and there were a number of people that did sign on to it. But what happened after that there was no circling back to tell people exactly what the proposal looked like and what the impact would be to Mary Street. So that's, that's sort of when I became involved in all of this. I read in the advocate that you in fact had approved it going forward um, and then did a little homework. I reached out to Daniel Amstutz to take a look at what was proposed. I also reached out to the town manager. And honestly, I had never been approached my husband and I are, are home most of the time and we did not receive any flyers or any information about this. And since the time that I have reached out to all of you, um, over 22 people have come and knocked on my door and said, I, are you the person that's gonna do something about this shared street? I, I did not make myself the self, um, 
the, the commissioner of the town, Mary Street Shared Street Project, but I do want to express my concern with the way that this was done with the lack of inclusiveness and transparency. And my ask of all of you is to rescind your approval moving forward and have an opportunity to look at the recommendations that were made by the Mary Street residents uh, to take advantage of that grant opportunity that could make Mary Street a safer venue for all of our families that live on the street as well as those that uh, would like to use Mary Street um, to walk their children to school. Um, I'm happy to provide any opportunity that I can to uh, be more specific about what we have seen. Um, we've also reached out to the police. I've made the calls myself several times when I've seen the cars speeding down Mary Street or taking the turn uh, on two wheels with children trying to play or ride their bikes in the street. I have great fear that someone is going to get hurt if we, we're not very careful about what we do going forward. So my ask is that you reconsider your approval from the August 17th meeting, that we reconvene an opportunity for people, especially the residents of Mary Street. When I looked at the list that you were asked to review on the approval, there were 12 Mary Street residents and, and right now we have 12 were in approval and now we have over 22 that are opposing. Um, and these are the residents that will be most impacted by this pilot program going forward. Um, so I thank you for your time. Um, and certainly, um, you know where to find me. You certainly find me with no problem with my tax bills. So um, please uh, know that I am available at any time and am so devoted to the safety of our children and my grandchildren who spend a great deal of, my, of their time in my driveway. So thank you all very much. All right, and thank you, Donna. And that takes us to the end of our open forum. Moving on to traffic rules and order. Item number 10, update Economic Development Recovery Task Force, Jenny Rate, Director of Planning and Community, Community Development. Mr. Mr. Chair, th this was actually meant to just be a correspondence item for the boards, except okay. uh, Ms. Rate's at, uh, attending the ARB meeting right now. All right, so do we have a motion for receipt by Mrs. Mahan? Move for receipt, Mr. Chair. Uh, Second by Mr. Carroll. Second. Any, any comments or questions, Mr. Corsi? No questions. Any comments or questions, Mr. Diggins? No questions, thank you. All right, since Jenny's not here, we don't have the answers, so that's good. All right, on a motion by Mr. Mahan, second by Mr. Carl, Attorney Hein. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Curo. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. It's unanimous vote. All right. And Mr. Diggins, you can text the moderator. Okay. I'm gonna, it looks like we have sort of an error in transcription here. So we're going to move the discussion of future select board meetings down until after we talk. We identify the date for the special town meeting. Um, so we'll go to item number 12, vote for a special town meeting. And Mr. Chapdelain, do you want to address this? Sure, so I really, uh, myself, Mr. Diggins, Mr. Leone, Eric Helmuth, and Chair Hurd have been having a lot of conversations about having a special town meeting and making this, making this happen. Um, I, you know, we have, we have a very short time frame. I think what we're looking uh, tonight is for the board to be able to open up the warrant. Uh, town council can correct me if I'm wrong. I think the board can vote tonight. We would need to then open it a week from tonight on the, the 21st and then the board can decide how long it wants to keep it open. I'm guessing for about a week's time so that we can begin a hearing process shortly thereafter. Um, looking at the calendar, I know the initial suggestion was um, that we start after the November election. Uh, it would seem like starting on November 9th makes good sense. We would then have to skip the 11th um, because it's Veterans Day and pick up again on the 16th uh, or, um, and I don't think this decision needs to be made tonight unless either the moderator or council tell me uh, that we do. We could think about meeting on a night that's not Monday or Wednesday. Um, 
so that we could meet it, meet twice in that first week. So I think the rough sketch of what we're looking at is the board voting to open a warrant a week from today, uh, perhaps closing a week from that, uh, all working towards having a town, a town meeting beginning on November 9th. All right. All right, so I will, Mr. Leone, thank you for yes, joining sir. us. Did you have thank anything you. to add? No, no, not yet. All right. All right, Mr. Diggins. Sorry about that. I just had a little problem on muting. Um, so I had had discussion with the um, moderator today. Uh, and um, I also had a discussion with Eric Helmuth, in, and this was after um, my regular meeting with you, um, um, Adam, um, Mr. Um, Town Manager. Uh, and we are a bit concerned about uh, the, um, where we are right now with te the technology. And so uh, we are thinking that it would be better uh, to maybe push things back to the 16th and do a couple of rehearsals uh, that week of the ninth. Uh, and my discussion with the, uh, the, the town moderator um, also resulted in my understanding that uh, he preferred that we stick with having the meetings on Mondays and Wednesdays just to provide a, a little sense of normalcy in these very um, abnormal times. And, uh, uh, I find myself speaking for the moderator now when he's mm -hmm. here, being and so I'm going to ask him to at least confirm uh, at this point so far that I am um, reflecting what we discussed correctly. Right, well, you, Mr. Chair. Um, yeah. Good evening, um, Mr. Diggins, and I did have a conversation today regarding um, possibly starting dates and what days we would actually hold town meeting on. Um, <clears throat> I think that with the training schedule that we're gonna have to get into place, both um, the town staff who are gonna man the program as well as our 252 town meeting members, um, the 16th would seem like a viable date by the time we get our hands on the, um, the virtual town meeting, the VTM platform, get it, edited to our liking, train our staff, and then train the trainers who are gonna to train the town meeting members. I think November 16th would be a realistic date. And yeah, I, I, um, Len did suggest holding it on more than um, just Monday and Wednesday, but I think for the consistency of the town meeting members, um, I would like to hold on the Monday and Wednesday dates as those are our traditional days. There's nothing in the bylaws that requires town meeting to be held on a Monday and a Wednesday, but I think psychologically it'd be um, easier for people to schedule their brain to work on Monday and Wednesday for town meeting. Um, it's gonna be difficult enough getting them to zoom in and, and figure this all out. It's not an easy process. It does take a lot of training and time. So I think we should leave that little bit of it alone. Okay. Anything further, Ms. Diggins? Yes, I mean, so um, through you, I had a question uh, for um, uh, uh, town council and um, yes. town manager, and that is about the timing of the um, closing of the the um, warrant and so my impression was that if we were going to aim for the ninth I mean then we would want to open and close the warrant on the 21st and if um we push it back to the 16th I don't know if it's still prudent I me mean, to um try to extend the, the amount of time at which the by which for which the warrant is open because I understand that there are some um legal requirements regarding the meeting schedule uh, for ARB that we have to be very considerate of. So if the town council could just clarify uh, when the warrant, he thinks the warrant should be, how he would advise us to close the warrant, whether we start town meeting on the 9th or 16th, I'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. The, um, 
couple of considerations at work are once this board votes to um, set a town meeting and a date for the opening of the warrant, you have to allow five days from your vote to open the warrant and actually opening the warrant itself. The warrant can open and close the same day or it can be open a week. Once the warrant closes, um, you have to allow basically 14 days before a town meeting can be, a special town meeting can be held. And also importantly, we have to make sure that we advertise the special town meeting that the warrant is distributed and that we have enough time to take care of all those measures such as posting it, um, in theory, distributing it to all households. Um, with respect to the ARB, the major consideration for them is that they have to run a legal ad for two successive weeks for any hearing that they're gonna hold on any warrant article in front of them. And if they're going to hold all of the um, article, hearing on all the articles that were posed for them last time, they really need to get going so that they have enough time to have two successive weeks of advertisements for whatever hearings they're gonna hold. Now, I guess it's possible they could have long sessions um, and they might only have one or two dates for hearings before the special town meeting. They also, in theory, have a certain period of time to report, but I, I wouldn't worry about that for now. The uh, redevelopment board, uh, in theory, also has the ability to report the same night as town meeting if the schedule is that crunched on what their recommendations are. There's no requirement that they necessarily provide something in advance, but as the moderator knows, town meeting members like to receive their reports, such as a report from the ARB on their recommended votes with a little bit of lead time to read them. So, so those are the things that I would, I would consider. I think if you set it for uh, November 16th uh, and you work backwards from there, I, I do think you'll have, you know, legally enough time. The, the, the real question is just, you know, it, it's going to be tight for the ARB. So that's just something that we'll have to recognize. One other quick thing. To have a remote town meeting, I just want to remind us that uh, the town, uh, the, the moderator has to um, consult uh, with the board and um, basically advise them that um, a remote meeting should be held uh, within a certain time frame. So, uh, John, you and I can talk about that at a later date, but we just want to make sure that we build in time to. Um, to notify the board and to have it, I believe it's one week in advance of, this, of any town meeting that um, we need to make sure it's clear that the meeting will be conducted remotely. Okay, we can figure that out. I, just, I think it's pretty obvious that it's going to be a, a virtual town meeting at this point, considering the state of the coronavirus. Yep, there's just a, I believe it's. Yeah, um, we have to fulfill the boxes, check the boxes. Yeah, chapter 92 of the Acts of 2020, section eight, mm -hmm. provides the list of things that sort of need to be checked off and the timing of you making that check off before the remote town meeting can be conducted. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Carroll. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Through you, I have a question for town council and a question for the moderator. Um, I guess to start with the moderator because this is the easy one. Um, if we go with um, November 16th and we do Mondays and Wednesdays, assuming we go past three sessions, would it be your anticipation that you would set an expectation that the meeting would be meeting the night before Thanksgiving? Might have an insurrection. <laughs> I think we couldn't, I don't think we could, um, just as with Veterans Day, I didn't want to obviously meet that for, uh, numerous reasons. I do not think that the day before Thanksgiving would work because people are still going to be traveling. They're going to be home making pies. Yeah. They're not going to want to talk yeah. about town business. Right. Just, just a consideration. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and through you, Mr. Chair, to town council, just one more consideration around the um, closing of the warrant is that we had made a considerate, a, um, commitment to um, uh, those who had submitted citizen warrant articles that we would resubmit them on their behalf. But in some of our 
last discussions, the last couple of meetings, we talked about contacting all of those proponents to see if they, number one, if they still want to submit them at all, or if they, uh, uh, barring that, if they want to submit them through us, um, you know, in a, in a slightly changed form, although generally, you know, within the same spirit of the original article. So in that case, um, don't we have to make sure that um, the warrant doesn't close before our next meeting, which is our next regular meeting is currently scheduled for October 6th. Mr. Chairman? Yes. So, uh, frankly, I, th I think it depends a little bit. If you were talking about folks submitting the exact same warrant article, um, I think that the select board is already committed to doing that and doesn't need to necessarily need to take a, a vote to put the same warrant article on the special town meeting warrant. If folks are modifying the warrant article, there are potentially other means by which something could be requested to be placed on the special town meeting warrant without it being a 100 signature resident petition. So, you know, the board has in the past accepted warrant articles at the request of the town manager. Um, if you wanted to invest the discretion in the town manager, I might take a vote to invest discretion in the town manager to place updated warrant articles on the uh, warrant as articles of the town. Does that make sense? So in other words, I, I think that the main purpose to me of keeping that warrant open for an, a longer period of time is <coughs> to make sure that any residents who basically want to file new warrant articles um, that the board was not already committed to bringing back um, they can do that and gather their 100 signatures. But if there are basically tweaks to articles, like for example, the one that comes to mind is the fossil fuel article. If there are tweaks to an article like that, um, to update the legal understanding of the posture of that of the Brookline bylaw, which was um, not approved by the Attorney General's office, um, I think that that could be done with the authorization of the board through the manager. I don't want to put the manager in a tough spot or the board in a tough spot, but I think under this circumstance, it could be done. But we'd have to take that vote tonight. <clears throat> yeah, I, I, I think it would yeah. be okay. You're trying to set a special town meeting date, and you're trying, you'd basically just be authorizing the town manager to execute a plan that you've sort of had in motion for quite some time to make sure that both warrant articles that um, the board wanted, the board promised to bring back, and updated versions thereof. Uh, get on the I mean, alternatively, I think you could call I me, mean, you, you, could, you could set the schedule so that the board has a clear picture of what articles will have the board's name on it. Um, but just because an article is on the warrant also doesn't mean that the board is agreeing that it Correct. supports that article. Sometimes okay. this board has sponsored articles that it later votes against. Um, because it thought the discussion would merit it, but didn't necessarily ultimately agree with the end outcome. All right. Okay. Thank you. And Ms. Nahai? Um, unless uh, the chair or moderator or anyone else tells me different, um, could I make a motion to call for a special town meeting commencing on Monday, November 16th, the usual time, and that at, uh, the warrant for this special town meeting will open on September 22nd at 8 a.m. And it will close a week later on September 29th at 4 p.m. Uh, is that appropriate? Sure. Okay, so that would be my motion. Thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, Mr. DeCorsi. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'll second that motion. Um, it, but based on what Attorney Heim said, I don't know if this will consider this as an amendment or, or as a separate motion, but I, I do think it makes sense for the board, um, given that this timing, the 22nd to the 29th, to authorize the town manager to um, accept um, ad additional warrant articles for, um, that had previously been proposed at the at the Springtown meeting um, to, to add those to the warrant. Is, is that 
and I did just question for Attorney Heim. If that, I think that's the language. I don't know if there's anything else that we should be adding to that, but that's to avoid people having to obtain 100 signatures because this will be a special town meeting. Mr. Chairman? Yes. Yes, I think that the idea would be to authorize the town manager to uh, reassemble the warrant uh, with all articles that were submitted to the annual town meeting um, uh, unless the uh, petitioner withdraw, does not intend to move forward with their article or would like to update their article. Um, I don't think it would be fair to put the manager or the board in the position of putting new articles on the table without getting right. signatures and stuff like that. I, I, if I understand that correctly, that's your intention as well, Mr. DeCourse. It, it, that, that, that's right. It, 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 this isn't for, for the article that was not proposed previously. If it's a brand new article, then the proponent of a brand new article would have to obtain the 100 signatures and, and submit the article within the week time period. All right, and so Mrs. Mahan, do you accept, do you add that to your motion? Yes, and, and I just want to double check with you, Mr. Chairman. Um, do we need two separate votes to A, call the date of the special town meeting and then B, the opening of the warrant, and as Mr. DeCourcy, I think, um, queried, or can we do it on all one vote? I'll defer to town council, but I believe we do need two separate votes. I think two separate votes is, a, is, is probably a little bit better uh, in this instance. So I would set the date and then set the vote. Okay, so I would change for uh, a vote for special town meeting and move a motion that special town meeting be called for uh, Monday, November 16th, 2020. All righty. And did Mr. Carl or Mr. Diggins by Second. a show of hands? Second. Any comments on the current motion on the table? All right, so Attorney Heim, we'll take a vote on this motion that's on the table by Ms. Mahan, seconded by Mr. Carl. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Akiro. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Unanimous vote. All right, and then Mr. DeCourcy, do you want to make the, the second motion? Sure. Um, so I, I move to authorize the town manager to submit warrant articles um, that had previously been submitted at the regular town meeting um, back in the spring upon confirmation from the um, proponents that they wish to go forward with the articles or make slight revisions there too. All right. And Ms. Mahan? Ms. Mahan? Um, I will second that, and I would just ask my colleague, Mr. DeCourcy, if also contained in that your motion that we move to open the um, warrant for the special November 16th special town meeting, open it on September 22nd at 8 a.m. and close it the following week, September 29th, 4 p.m. Yes, yeah, no, absolutely. I'm sorry, I was focused on the, the authorization, not the dates. Absolutely, the uh, 22nd at 8 Closing on the 29th at four. All right. Well, second. Mr. Diggins. Mr. Diggins. So yes, I, I, I have a couple questions. We one for him. Um, Ms. Mahan, Ms. Mahan through you. Um, why Tuesday to Tuesday instead of Monday to Monday? Uh, I just wrote down the dates that I thought the town manager gave us. Is that Tuesday to Tuesday? I thought it was gonna be. I think he said Monday to Monday. That's what I thought. Is, is Monday not the twenty not September twenty second? No, I was twenty first. Twenty first. Okay, so then I'm sorry. My first day of school. Oh, lovely. So maybe. Um, so it'll be uh, September twenty first, twenty twenty, to September twenty eighth, twenty twenty. And thank you, Mr. Kuzakin. No problem. No problem. So the second question is um, to um, the, the um, town council. Hey, I'm I'm a little confused because. It, I, from your explanation, I, I had the, the feeling that having a warrant open for a week was just going to make things really tight. And, um, and so, I mean, maybe you're not in a position to give us advice on this and we just have to figure it out on our own. Uh, but um, uh, 
I guess I was thinking that we just need to really have this thing open for a day so as to really make the schedule work. Um, uh, but if you think it's doable with a week, I, in my discussion with you, I was, I was initially in favor of having it open a week me to give people more time. But my understanding was that by having giving notice for five days, it would give people time to prepare for it and we could open and close it in a day so that we could really have the time to process uh, the, the um, articles, both for us and the um, ARB. But, um, so, I'm sorry. Yes. Mr. Chair, may I? Yes. Mr. Diggins, that, that, that's correct. I, I apologize if I've caused any confusion, but you have to have notice from tonight's meeting to the opening of the warrant. This has to be a minimum of five days. In terms of how long the warrant is open, once it's opened, it can open and close the same day. It can be open a week, whatever you guys think is appropriate. The legal timeline can be satisfied, but the more time that you give uh, to leave the warrant open, the less time there will be to notice hearings. So if you want to compact the schedule, that will only be helpful for the ARB, but I could also understand if you wanted to leave it open for a longer period of time, given what we're all trying to accomplish. I wasn't trying to assert a premium on it one way or the other. You have to have five days notice between tonight's vote and the opening of the warrant. Once you open the warrant, you can decide how long you want it to be open for. At a minimum, it's one day. The maximum is, is up to you. Hey, Mr. Town Manager, do you have something to add? I would just add, so basically in practicality, Voting this way tonight would give me two weeks to work with all those article proponents and sort out if they want to go forward, if they do want to go forward, is it going to be exactly the same or is there modifications to be made? What will those modifications look like? So, yeah, I mean, I think you basically you're, fun you're functionally giving me time to work with the proponents. Yep. Um, I just want to make one comment. It, if you just recall, there were only 13 citizen proponent articles on the Springtown meeting. So that's worrying about, and, and half, nearly half of them were from one person. Yeah, sure. Just wanted to point that out. Yeah, I mean, Mr. Tom Mancha. Given that, I mean, if, if we want to tighten it up and open it next week and close it next week, I mean, I'm, I, I, I would be okay with that as well. I mean, does Monday to Friday significantly make a difference? I'm sure the weekend doesn't do too much as far as legal timing. No, I mean, that, that's, that would be fine by me. And Well, I guess the question is, does it make a difference helping us if we're giving somebody, you know, somebody that might be busy during the week a couple extra days to get their article in? Yeah, I, question makes sense. I could see that too. Yeah. So, okay, so unless the chair tells me different, my motion stands of the dates of 921 to 928. Is that correct, Mr. Chair? Yes. Thank you. Yes, Ms. Chaplin. I, I sincerely apologize for not seeing this earlier, but the, the 28th is Yom Kippur and we're not meeting on that date. Um, we, if we're going to extend it, we should do it to the 29th to not have the warrant close the day of the Jewish holiday. Okay, okay I'm going to try it again. Getting back to one of the original dates. Uh, so open the warrant on September 21st, 2020. Close it on September 29th, 2020. Opening on the 21st at 8 a.m. Closing on the 29th at 4 p.m. Right. This has been a long and confusing discussion. <laughs> so, that, that was Mr. DeCourcy's motion, right? Mr. DeCourcy? I'll second that. No, that's right. I'll accept that as an amendment. We'll accept that. Um, that we, without uh, re repeating the 21st right. through the 29th. Period. I think we have nailed down our dates. So on a motion by Mr. DeCourcy. Until we get it right. Seconded by Ms. Mahan. Attorney Hahn. I just want to say that I really enjoy spending 9.30 at night talking about the finer points of warrant timelines. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. 
Kevin would say, I'm tingling with anticipation, yes. Um, Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Kiro. Yes, please. Mr. Yes. It's unanimous vote. All right. And thank you, Mr. Madre. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. All. All right. Thank you. So we have the last and item on our agenda is future select board meetings. Right now we have up through October, we are meeting on October 5th and we are meeting on October 19th. So I anticipate that we'll move into November to schedule meetings to coincide with our special town meeting. I would anticipate that if, you, you know, we would have to look to see what comes in for warrant articles and hearings. If we were going to need to another meeting in October, we'd do it at a future select board meeting. So right now we would just look for, so we will need a meeting on November 16th to convene prior to our special town meeting. Um, so let me look here. So where we're on the 9th, do we want a meeting on November 2nd for a regular business meeting? Does that sound appropriate? So we'll have November 2nd and November 16th. Um, Wait, did we, we wanted to do it on the second, the day before the presidential election? Doesn't Mrs. Skripalko usually ask, we don't. Oh, okay. So maybe the ninth at seven. The ninth work work better. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, um, I just want to say I'm sorry, Mr. Chair. Yep. Well, I I, I think we were maybe planning on doing a rehearsal on then, but um, I guess we could move the rehearsal to the the tenth. I mean, um, uh, so I, I'm just thinking long term the schedule for around virtual town meeting. Uh, so I just put that out there, but I, I can work that through. So sorry for the interruption. I'll, I'll take it through. We'll do yep. the select board meeting. We'll have precedence and we'll work out rehearsal I mean, based on our schedule. Don't tell anyone I said that. All right. So we have 11, 9, 11, 16. Do we think we'll require one on the 30th? I would say yes. Yep the office unless somebody the 30th doesn't work for them and then we'd have to go to the 23rd and hope it was a special town meeting mm -hmm. so it's 30th okay mr chair yep that work for everyone by nod of yeah. the head yep all right into december so 30th so it looks like to get into december i assume at our second meeting in December, we're going to have our abbreviated meeting, depending on availability. Yeah, so uh, could I ask uh, Mr. Chair if um, December 7th, yep. 715 for our regular meeting and December 14th, 21st, is that too close, 21? All right, 21. You know, preference on 21, yeah. And no one says anything else, then uh, 7.15 on the 7th, 6 p.m. on the 21st, which is our abbreviated um, business that has to be done by then. All right, so I will look for a motion to set, oh, wait, we don't do, we don't need a motion for select board meetings. All right, so we will have a select board meeting on November 9th, November 16th, no November 30th, on December 7th and December 21st. With that, we turn to new business. Mr. DeCourcy. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just briefly, I just wanted to touch on um, a few things regarding the, the Mugar um, property in, in, in the neighborhood there um, with, the, with the, uh, the homeless and encampment. I wanna recognize Officer Joe Kniff, I want to recognize the Health and Human Human Ser Services Department and the Assemble Homeless Coalition uh, for their work at the 
at the property. Um, just in the past couple of weeks, the neighbors have been notified that the uh, officer Kniff will be uh, acting as a, a liaison and they have been, been sent an email from him um, encouraging to reach out with any questions that they may have, any concerns that they may have. And there's been a number of issues there over the summer and um, he, has, he has worked hard um, with them. I think this is a good partnership between the police department, health and human services, and a private partnership through the um, Somerville Homeless Coalition, but also um, just to send a message to the, to the neighbors because there has been a lot of concerns and, and there is a, a mechanism here to provide some information, but also I wanna let the board know that I intend to work with the neighbors and, and perhaps report back because while there has been a, a positive outreach with, with the neighbors and, and there still needs to, to, to be some more and there's been this partnership, I do think there is something missing in terms of what the dialogue has been with the, the property owner there. And so I'd like at a future meeting to, to report back on that, but in the meantime, to recognize these efforts that have taken place. All right, thank you. And I apologize to town manager town, in town council. I keep skipping them. And I'm, since I'm not in the chamber, I don't have that lineal fashion. So um, I'll go to attorney Jaime, new business? No new business, sir, thank you. Mr. Chapdelaine, any new business? Yeah, a couple pieces, but I'll be brief. Uh, one, I wanna let the board know, you know, we were holding two dates next week for a joint meeting with the ARB. Uh, the ARB is available to do that joint meeting on the 21st. So a week from today, would be a, a joint meeting with the ARB. And I, I can talk with you, Mr. Chair, um, and the new chair of the ARB and Jenny Rate about an agenda for that meeting uh, next week. Um, I do want to reiterate, um, I know Ms. Mahan read the message that I sent to the police department on Friday morning of last week, but uh, I do want to reiterate a thanks to the police department for how well and professionally they handled what was a very tense day on Thursday. Um, so um, again, thank you to the men and women of the Arlington Police Department. Um, I wanna point out to the board that the blue bike station that was approved down near Magnolia Park, uh, after a, a further look by the DPW director and Dan Amstutz, they're proposing moving it from uh, that sort of oval space to a space adjacent to the bike path, uh, near uh, Thorn uh, near Magnolia Field. Um, if the uh, absent um, issue raised right now by the board, I'd like to give them the go ahead to do that so they can get the station uh, input. Uh, Parks and Rec is okay with it, DPW is okay with it, I'm okay with it. So I um, just wanna make the board aware of that. And then finally, um, I wanna mention, as was mentioned uh, several times earlier tonight, the uh, community conversation with Lieutenant Padrini is currently scheduled for September 22nd, last uh, tonight, actually uh, starting at 6 p.m., we conducted uh, the final of three community stakeholder planning sessions to get feedback from various members of the community representing different groups in the community about how the session should be formatted. Um, and we'll be finalizing that agenda and announcing more details in the next week. But uh, a week from tomorrow, we will be holding that session with Lieutenant Padrini. Thank you. Thank you. All right, so now, um, Mr. Carl? Yeah. No new business. Thank you. And Mr. Mahan? How brave of you to call on me. Um, I'll try to, I think I've uh, covered it, so I'll try to do the rest in snippets as much as I can. Um, Mr. Uh, uh, Chairman, um, as you know, we had our goals meetings. Um, Fortunately, we had the two years previous. I know a lot of us went by our notes and our memories of what was discussed last year to put in, but um, perhaps if uh, the town manager, um, when he puts together the current draft goals that we came up with, if there was something that we discussed last year and for some reason none of us had it in our notes and um, we didn't remember it, if that could somehow still be included, uh, be indicated that way, and then I would leave it to the chair if we need to have a quick agenda item for five, 10 minutes, if there's something that needs to be discussed again as a goal or if it's a universal one. Um, 
the second thing, um, just through you, um, whenever, whenever the town manager thinks it's appropriate, um, I'd like a, not necessarily a date, but uh, sort of a, a, a framework of when town hall does open for business. I know people can call and um, people are running things down, but similar to the city of Worcester, that um, not all offices, but perhaps certain offices, you can call and make appointments um, so that we're monitoring or, or some other reopening plan that the manager along with the Board of Health and whoever is appropriate um, needs to do that. Uh, the other thing is I know we voted like a, over a month ago to um, put up recognition for our first responders, to Mr. Hurd, our first responders, healthcare and essential workers. Um, hoping that happens soon. I, I guess we didn't put a time Address certain that. on. Yeah. And then, and I wanna make sure, I might've misheard, I thought I heard it was going to be across Mass Ave in front of Jefferson Cutter. Now I'm hearing in front of, Je my thing is, I don't want it to be somewhere that you literally have to be in there, especially with all those construction vehicles. So I hope it's, <laughs> more prominent um, and then just very briefly on the uh, other controversy with the police on the memoriam decal for officer Garrett Cody um, I just wanted to clear something up that the then police chief Fred Ryan ordered that one cruiser to have that decal it was right after Captain Paul Dooley um, after a vote from the then Board of Selectmen um, decided to it felt it was overlooked that the one um, police officer we lost in the line of duty, Officer Garrett Cody, married father of five, um, trying to stop a crime, alter scuffle, altercation by the L. Y. Brook. Um, the a person shot him once, which was not life threatening, but then with his own service um, weapon, shot him three more times. He was rushed to Mass General and he succumbed about four hours later. He was uh, 36 years old and he was on the force, I believe, nine years. So what happened was uh, we embarked on uh, memorializing that. That's why we I mentioned it to, to the town manager on Tuesday. He said he wasn't aware of that. Um, but there's also a plaque and another memoriam outside of the uh, police department. So that, that when that five um, very small four by six inch decal was ordered by police uh, chief Ryan, to be on that cruiser. <clears throat> it was part of the continuing um, memoriam to Officer Cody. And I'm personally insulted that um, it was removed and I, I, I'd like to see it return. And then my last thing, which I did speak, and my colleagues can weigh on that, obviously not tonight, because it's not an agenda item, but um, I did speak to um, town council, um, town council, ah, hey, actually you're an attorney, Mr. Hurd, um, that, um, uh, starting the process for the town manager uh, evaluations. Um, and, and the reason I say that, and I've had a discussion with uh, Mr. Chapdelaine, um, there is one point I'd like to renegotiate in the town manager contract, but unless I misunderstood the conversation, we can't just jump to renegotiations. We have to have the evaluation pro process and that has to happen by December 31st. So, um, so I'm gonna leave that to you, Mr. Chair, thank you. All right, Mr. Diggins. Yeah, just a couple. Sorry, just a couple items, you know. Uh, first, you know, it, I know it's been a little while, but um, it, the, the shooting of Jacob Blake in, in um, Wisconsin, I mean, that, that was really gut-wrenching. And, and then the violence that broke out was was really horrible too. But his mother actually gave a really good speech in about how to um, respond to things like that. It was very touching. It was very constructive. And I'm sure you can find it on YouTube. And I would suggest people go and take a look at it. Uh, and and um and also gut wrenching was um, the the shooting over the weekend of the two police officers in um in California. I mean, one was a mom who has like a six year old daughter and the other guy um, was, the guy was 24 years old. I don't even know the race of them, but it doesn't really matter. Um, it's just that he, those are just, all of them are just really horrible. And, and, and I hate to bring this up, but I think we just need to you know, think about the overall context. And, um, and um, on a, a 
write a note. Um, I'd like to put on the agenda for next meeting um, two um, possible liaison uh, positions for me uh, to the HPIC, the Housing Plan, Housing Plan Implementation Committee, and uh, and also um, the um, Envision Arlington, the Standing Committee, Aiden. And so uh, let's have a discussion about that next time. Thank you. Thank you. And then a couple things. Um, just again, to follow up on what a few people have said, I just want to again thank the men and women of the APD. We had a what could have been a really tense and disastrous day on Thursday. And I think both from the town management, Chief Flaherty, and all the men and women that stood up between the two groups, they did an excellent job of keeping calm in the face of adversity. So thank you to all the police officers that were out that day. I do want to compliment the uh, our new director of recreation, Joe Conley. I've been at the rank a number of times in the past week as hockey has started full force. And they, in the, in the rink, they've done a really great job of both with the condition of the rank and the cleanliness, but also the safety procedures that they put in place really help allow, allow the kids to skate, but also keep everyone safe that's there. And, you know, they're really doing a great job of, of over at the rink doing that. Um, and then just the last thing. So I, I did talk to the town manager today about the banner. So the banner is currently in production with DPW and then it will be placed um in a spot in 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 uh sorry at the cutter house yeah i i, I thought park. Park. <laughs> yeah so you know i do think you know when we originally voted on it, it was a prominent location in Woodmore park um i had envisioned and you know i'll talk diane off, off about you know what it can look like and you know we can, i can deal with the town manager on this but just a location really up, really at the forefront of Woodmore Park, right at the, the light where, you know, everyone can see it when they're at the light or passing on bikes or walking. And, and so something very visible, not tucked away in the park, but that's something that we'll work on. But it is in progress. It hasn't been forgotten. And hopefully we'll see that maybe by the next time we meet. With that, I will take a motion to adjourn. All right. So moved. By Mr. Carl. Seconded by? Second. Mr. DeCourcy. All right. Attorney Heim. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Man is vote. Thank you all. So long, guys. Take care, everyone. Take care. Yeah,